We're here at Mobile World Congress 2019 and I'm joined by Yasmeet Singh Sethi, research leader of Ericsson Consumer Lab. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks so much for making time to catch up with me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, I've got a couple of big questions for you, but I'd like to first just get your uh, 30,000 foot overview of what's on the floor here. We're, it's, uh, mm -hmm. we're in Barcelona, an amazing pavilion that Ericsson's put on yet again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about what's on the Ericsson pavilion from your team and some of the highlights? Yep. So this year, uh, what's new actually with the Ericsson pavilion is that we have a brand new area called 5G for consumer experiences. Okay. Right. And and. Uh, the intention behind having this particular area was that we wanted to kind of drive thought leadership uh, in this space, you know, helping our customers really understand what are those sort of consumer experiences that they could offer when technologies like 5G, edge computing and IoT are right. available. Well, there's some big, big topics in that space. I mean, when we think about building technology and infrastructure and some of the sort of routers and switches and servers and I'm also now software to find everything, um, often it's the consumer, it's the, the last thought. When really now what I'm getting from what you're telling me and what I've read so far is that you're putting the consumer at the front of the story now. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's fair to say. And, and we see that happening in the market as well. I mean, if you look at 5G deployment and 5G launches, yeah. uh, especially in US, uh, a lot of uh, 5G launches are now targeting the consumer market. Okay. So a lot of customers are coming back to us and, and asking about, hey, what are those sort of experiences, applications and services right. that we could enable uh, or could launch with the technology such as 5G? So um, a couple of quick questions on that. Firstly, um, I mean, it may seem obvious, but uh, for, for viewers who are tuning in uh, and I've heard of the 5G uh, uh, challenges that the world's facing and particularly what you're doing around the consumer experience area, uh, just give us a little bit of background on kind of why you created this area and specifically what it's focused on. I mean, it sounds obvious, but I'm sure you can give us a lot of great insight into what brought it about and, and what its focus is. Yeah, so the, the intention with this area is that the industry today, you know, is grappling with certain sort of myths as far as okay. 5G is concerned with regards to consumer market. Now, one of the myth is uh, that there is no near-term consumer benefit right. uh, from 5G. So we are trying to kind of bust that myth, uh, talking about aspects like fixed wireless access, yep. uh, the value of fixed wireless access for end consumers, uh, because it's all about providing more broadband choices yeah. uh, to, at the end of the day. Uh, then it's also about uh, solving issues like urban network congestion okay. uh, that consumers are facing. So we have a lot of solutions on the floor that kind of deal with how we can optimize and, and how we can build these networks to kind of deal with, with that part. Right. Uh, the second big myth is that there are absolutely no use cases when it comes to consumer market. Sure. So, so there is a lot of emphasis on industry 4.0 when we talk about 5G. And with this area now at MWC, what we are doing is realizing some of these use cases. Okay. So we have a lot of uh, demonstrations that we have put on the floor talking about future AR, VR related experiences. So for example, how you would be watching sports in 2025, for wow. example or how you would be communicating using 3D hologram calling in 2025. So we really make it tangible, we utilize the technology, and we really realize what are the possibilities of this uh, sort of technologies in, in the future. Now, um, I'm assuming this is based on a bunch of research you've already performed uh, over a number of years, probably decades knowing Ericsson. Um, give us some insight into kind of how this came about. Uh, was it based on research you've already done? Uh, I know you're, you're launching a number of papers over time. Uh, what kind of drove this, and, and, and if so, what sort of research came into this? Yeah, so this is, uh, of course, based on massive research that we're doing. I mean, we've been we've been doing, uh, trying to build the narrative for 5G for consumers for the past one and a half years or Indeed. so. And uh, this is is the, the, the area that we have right now, fundamentally is based on brand new research right. that we have done in 22 countries, speaking with about 30,000 consumers. Wow. Trying to kind of bust some of these industry myths. Yeah. For example, the use cases, looking at the price premium on 5G, whether consumers are willing to pay, uh, also answering broader questions like, are smartphones going to be the silver bullet for 5G, mm -hmm. or 5G needs an iconic device? And right. if so, what would be those type of iconic devices? So it's massive research uh, that we have available, and we're pulling this research insights as the foundation to realize some of these demonstrations. And okay. Advice. Now, I guess the next natural question, uh, people watching are going to be wondering, well, how, can I get that research? Is it available? How do I get my hands on it? Yeah. So we are, of course, uh, launching this research at Mobile World 
Congress. Right. There is an exclusive uh, teaser that we have on the floor. Uh, we're also running a seminar, which is titled Shaping Your Consumer Business with 5G. We'll be uh, with a customer uh, talking about how they see the opportunities in the 5G consumer business. Okay. And then, of course, uh, this research will be available soon, in fact, very soon, in the public domain, uh, and we will make a lot of noise around it as well. Can't wait to read it. Now, you mentioned a seminar. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So the seminar is, is as I said, you know, is structured around trying to kind of uh, bust these industry myths, yeah. the four industry myths. We will, of course, bring a lot of research, but then we are pairing up with a very progressive operator that's also believing in the 5G consumer opportunity. Okay. And uh, this is, of course, an operator based in Europe, uh, which is which is also interesting, right. considering there's a lot of discussion about there's where a, Europe lands in terms of 5G. There's a lot of big things happening in this space in that world now. Exactly. So we, we're trying to build an operator who really, you know, believes in the 5G opportunity right. and the consumer opportunity, and discussing with them on a fireside chat what are those tangible use cases that they see, uh, where is the money, and how do they really manage the capex and the opex while ensuring that they kind of build the network. You've probably got a bit of a sense of what they might look like. Uh, are there any that you, you could sort of uh, imagine uh, or share at the stage, or is that jumping the gun a bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, if, if you're talking about the use cases, I believe, or is it is it more about just a general sense of what that fireside chat's going to bring out? Uh, any of the sort of, uh, you know, when you when you run this conversation, are there any things that you sort of have a general sense now that are going to be highlights uh, around whether the you know some of the consumer focus piece, uh, the use cases that might come about? Yeah. So, uh, you know, with this operator particularly, they're operating in a market which has the highest usage, highest mobile data usage in the world. So 5G is apparently okay. very, very uh, relevant for them in order to kind of manage this capacity and explosive mobile data growth. Right. And not only that, they're also looking at what are the additional services that they can actually build. So uh, for the near-term opportunity, they're looking at cloud gaming. Okay. You know, how can they really go about offering uh, the experience of uh, maybe a $2,000 uh, graphic intensive PC right. on a smartphone device? And it could be any possible smartphone device. Wow. Right. So so building on these cloud, cloud gaming and esports opportunities, building on where we should be deploying 5G first in order to solve congestion control, and also look at a model where people would be kindly, you know, looking at uh, how people will be paying for these services as right, well. So the right. big question right now the industry has is whether we should still be going about with the gigabyte model, which okay. is paying by buckets, yep. or we should be charging or looking at a service-based charging, where you probably pay just a monthly fee to probably get a VR pass right. uh, to yep. look at uh, yep. you know a VR game in or soccer or, or Formula One game. So okay. this operator would definitely go about discussing some of these opportunities. Well, I think we, you know some of the stuff you're referring to there. We've already seen these models work, haven't we? I mean, people pay a fixed monthly fee for the likes of Netflix. Uh, they pay a fixed monthly fee for streaming music of various brands we want to go into. So it seems to me that it's logical that if you can package up a, a service bundle, if you like, of gaming, mobile broadband, uh, you know, roaming and so forth, data intensive, video intensive uh, messaging, that people are more likely to subscribe to the monthly fee and not have to lose sleep about whether they're going to overuse their data plan, if you like. Because that, you know, I'm, I'm the same in Australia. I buy a plan. I'm always constantly checking if I use too much data, right? It drives me crazy. If I knew I had a fixed cost for all the services, I'd probably go that way straight away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and we, we, we see that a lot with consumers that we speak with, that yeah. one of the big reasons why we we somehow see the sort of growth that we're seeing in the mobile data space uh, is because most of the traffic is going on Wi-Fi. Okay. And that's because of the data anxiety. You don't want yeah. to use up a yeah. lot, of mo lot of mobile data. Uh, with 5G and additional capacity being kind of available and new business models that would actually come in, that might actually remove some of those limitations that okay. consumers kind of face with using a lot of mobile data. Now that would actually mean that today when we're talking about uh, Western European mobile data usage to be roughly about 32 gigabytes by 2024, yep. uh, what that would mean is we are expecting that to go in excess of 100 gigabytes by 2024. Wow. If immersive video formats actually come into the picture. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a, a, a final question for you. I mean, we talked a lot about the focus on the consumer and the consumer experience area that you created. Um, how does this fit with some of the emerging markets? When we think about the number, I mean, you're, one of the recent uh, Ericsson Mobility reports talked about onboarding a million new subscribers 
per day. This is not existing people who are churning, but new people are getting new handsets. We've got three really big regions in the world of like 1.1 billion people in the 54 territories and nations of Africa. We've got 1.3 billion in, in China, uh, in Afri uh, India, sorry. We've got 1. nearly 4 billion in China. There are a lot of people there that don't have handsets. The thing that strikes me is their expectation is already so high. Like we've gone, you know, traditionally Western world have gone through dial-up modems and, you know, you've got mail and that sort of whole thing and wireless phones that flip. They're jumping straight to 5G. That, that must completely change the expectation because they don't know what everyone else said. And I see this now where people are talking to phones like this. Uh, throughout Asia, you know, it's too hard to do multi by character, so people do voice IM. Uh, this must be a space you're already looking at and, and have some very big answers for. Where do you see this going as far as the new emerging markets go? Because I mean, this to me seems one of the biggest opportunities for people to generate new monetization on their investment. Yeah, absolutely. And we see there is massive interest when it comes to 5G yeah. in emerging markets. I mean, when we look at when do consumers expect 5G to be available in their own market, uh, you would have the average is just about two years or so. Okay. But if you speak with emerging markets such as Brazil, Indonesia, India, they're already expecting 5G to be available in one year. Wow. And one of the big reasons, I think there are two big reasons that uh, that you know 5G would benefit users in emerging markets. Uh, most of the bigger mega cities where we have issues pertaining to capacity uh, are in these pockets yeah. of emerging yeah. markets, right? So the first relief that they would get is the, the network congestion part that we would be able to solve with 5G. Right. The second big benefit is connecting the unconnected. You know, laying out fiber yeah. uh, in massive territories is really going to be a, a mammoth task. So wireless and with, with 5G, you know, is a great combination mm -hmm. to kind of go ahead and connect the unconnected and, and offer a great broadband choice to users, but also you know, go ahead and, and uh, offer a competing choice against the legacy uh, sort of broadband such as okay. cable and, and DSL. Uh, you know, 5G fixed wireless access could indeed be uh, another alternative that would yep. be available yep. to these emerging markets. So I think there is, uh, in fact, 5G is much more relevant for emerging markets in comparison to the matured markets. Of course, all the action now yeah. is in matured markets. The first launches will happen in matured markets. But I see emerging markets, especially like India, uh, Brazil, and yep. so forth, they will catch up very fast. And, and yep. uh, the scale is really going to be behind on 5G. I genuinely believe you. I think you know, we've always focused on captive markets because we feel it's easier to churn from 3 to 4 to 5G. Uh, but I think the the point you made around the rollout of fixed uh, wireless access, I personally believe that uh, small to medium sized businesses in emerging markets are going to leverage fixed wireless access and multi, multi services very quickly. We've already seen this with like FPOS terminals with 4G yeah. SIMs in them, right? Yeah. No more ADSL or no more ISDN, it's all just wireless and the payments go through securely. Yeah. Well, it's been fantastic to get your insights and thank you so much for making time to catch up with me. Yeah, much uh, fun can't wait to get my hands on what you've got on the floor here this week and, and just have a bit of a play myself. But I, I think it's fair to say that uh, here in Barcelona, Mobile World Congress 2019 is already a resounding success for you and your team and Ericsson as a whole. Yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Thanks, Tess. Cheers. Cheers.